A good cartoon is like a stinging editorial, except more concise. It uses pictures to evoke thought, to expose double standards. But sometimes the cartoon itself is a double standard. Let me show you. This cartoon appeared on a German magazine called Der Spiegel. It means the mirror in German, Der Spiegel. On this occasion, a foggy and broken mirror. The subject is clear. It's about India's population overtaking China's. But look at how it's been depicted. India is the overcrowded train with people hanging outside the compartment. And China? China is a sophisticated bullet train. It's falling behind, but it appears unbothered. Just like the subject, the message is also clear. China is economically advanced, while India is backward. Many people on the internet have called this cartoon racist, and we agree. The India of 2023 is not about run-down trains with people on the roof. It's about modern, sustainable machines. Some, like the Vande Bharat, can rival European trains. But why care about the facts? Why bother with accuracy when you can peddle prejudice? One Twitter user laid out the numbers. In Germany, only 61% of train routes are electric. Guess how much it is in India? 85%. In fact, Germany's target for 2030 is only 75%. But like I said, why care about the facts? Cartoons are supposed to be subtle yet accurate. This one is neither. It's a crass attempt at peddling old and racist ideas about India. Remember the snake charmer stereotype? Well, this is no different. And the Western media keeps doing it again and again. Let me show you another cartoon from 2014. It's from a repeat offender, the New York Times. This was around the time India had completed its mission to Mars. Look at how the NYT depicted it. A man with a cow knocking on a door. Inside the building, it says Elite Space Club. That cartoon also triggered a lot of outrage. The New York Times ended up apologizing. But what's the point? Years later, Western attitude has not changed. It was a man with a cow in 2014. It's an overcrowded train today. The fact is, such stereotypes attract eyeballs. They showcase India as some exotic basket case. And that's one part of the problem. The second part is this. These cartoons reflect a denial of sorts. The West simply cannot accept India's growth story. How can a former colony with 1.4 billion people do what Britain or Germany does? And that too with hostile neighbors. That too without Western help. How can India do it? The idea is unacceptable for Western journalists and publishers. Hence these cartoons. India's Union Minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar has reacted sharply to this depiction. He said it's not wise to bet against India. He's also said that India's economy would soon be bigger than Germany's. Now, I know what some people will say. Why bother responding to such cartoons? Why not ignore them altogether? Well, I'll tell you why. Because this is how perceptions build. Imagine you're an ordinary German sitting in Berlin or Munich. You see this cartoon. What's your first thought? That China is some tech wonderland, while India is a poor country with crumbling infrastructure. Do you see the problem here? You expect this sort of propaganda from China state media. In fact, even from the Chinese government. Last week, they were asked about India overtaking China's population. Do you know what the reply was? It's about quality, not quantity, they said. If you could convert those words into a cartoon, it would look like this one. The same one that Der Spiegel published. You see, China is working over time to change the narrative around this news. They have two objectives here. One is to hide their own demographic slowdown, their aging population. The second is to discredit India's rise. And unfortunately, the West has fallen for it. Let's face it, this is not just about India versus China. It's about two different approaches to economic development and growth. India represents democracy. It shows that democracy may be slow, but it can deliver. China, meanwhile, represents autocracy. It sacrifices its freedom for growth. The question is, which one would you prefer? I know what the two million Uyghurs in China's labor camps will say. I also know what seven million Tibetans will say, and the ethnic Mongols and the ethnic Kazakhs. China's growth is built on the grave of freedoms and human rights. Is that the sort of growth Western magazines want to applaud? And if so, it's their editorial call. But at least represent the truth about India. Don't peddle racism to sell your copies.